John Parker here with Shooting Sports USA, and I'm joined with Craig Kozinski, the new CEO of USA Shooting. Thanks for joining me, Craig. Thanks, John. Let's talk about how you came to join USA Shooting. Yeah, it was an um, unfortunate set of circumstances, to be honest. I've been obviously um, involved with USA Shooting through my son. My youngest son was a, was a national team member. He's twice an Olympian and a, and a silver medalist in the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, but years before that, I had been uh, involved with uh, the nominating and governance committee on the on the USA Shooting Board. So I had uh, gotten into the family business, so to speak, uh, by just wanting to help out and be part of the part of the um, the movement. I had been following uh, shooting obviously for a number of years as a as a military professional. I started uh, my career in 1988, right after the uh, the uh, the Olympics uh, in Seoul. And, uh, and then I, I looked back over the course of my, as I was competing for this job, and looked back over the course of the years and realized that all but one of the Olympic cycles I was deployed or, or overseas somewhere, and I, and I didn't have, you know, uh, vivid memories of all, all, of the, all of the sports across. You just see the, the big news stories of, of the sports, and shooting was never one of those. So as, uh, as we started to get into the knowing what uh, competitive shooting and Olympic shooting was was all about, I became uh, more and more in, intrigued with that. Obviously, as a, as a military uh, professional and, and that type of, of tactical um, shooting and training and, and application uh, was what I lived and breathed every day. But as we uh, started uh, working, you know, essentially we started all this off at the NRA range in Fairfax, Virginia from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. every Saturday morning. And as, um, as myself and other fathers of uh, kids coming onto the team uh, got more and more involved and started getting certifications through the through the NRA for uh, range safety officer and also rifle and pistol instructors per the NRA standard. We uh, took over much of the, the training throughout uh, our child's involvement in, uh, in, the, in the team. So I did that for four years. He was uh, then awarded a scholarship to a major university to compete and, and it was the, the rest is history. So I, as I um, retired from the military in 2016, I, I joined the, the board committee and started um, getting more and more ensconced into the whole uh, family business, as it were. And, and as I you know, got to know many of the key figures on the, on the staff and helped support them to the degree that I possibly could through my connections, either as a, in my military network and, and career, but also through my, my new job. And, and part of the job that I, one of the jobs that I had done most recently as a post-retirement was to work uh, in the industry with a, with a pistol company based in Texas. So got involved with those folks and in, in helping them design and build a, a new factory and then a spinoff company that, that they um, established for shooting sports, uh, competitions and, and training. I became an employee with and we started really getting into establishing a nationwide network there. Tying in USA Shooting, that type of um, Olympic uh, international uh, discipline was uh, was a little bit of a foreign concept at that time. But as this opportunity came about last year, under the unfor unfortunate circumstances of the previous CEO falling ill and, and, and having to uh, withdraw from his leadership position there, I was uh, essentially influenced to uh, to compete for the job, and I was fortunate enough to to, to take it. So I think it's a great confluence of um, of history, of passion, of, of some traditions, supporting from uh, different sides of the fence, and also being on another side of the industry fence and, and seeing what the possibilities could be with direct and indirect support from across uh, the uh, the industry. Now, you might be biased because your son is an Olympian, a silver medalist, but um, do you think that young people that get involved in the shooting sports become better citizens? Well, I, I think any, anybody that, uh, that, tr that trains and, uh, and educates themselves in responsible gun ownership and use or become, become better citizens. I think being involved in, uh, in competition, in training, and in, in disciplining, disciplining your, yourself both mentally physically and emotionally, especially th what shooting sports can do to, to challenge you, certainly make, makes you a better citizen. And so I think that uh, USA Shooting represents the best of the citizenry, citizenry of, of the United States. And as we were um, you, you know, becoming more and more involved in what USA Shooting does and represents and looking at as, you know, essentially the, uh, and I you know, no, didn't really you know, keep up with medal counts uh, over the years. Growing up, I was a, bi a big fan of uh, Olympic boxing 
and follow that throughout and, and you know took uh, and follow those careers as they became uh, pros. I can't say that about shooting, so I look at that and you see some of these uh, athletes that became medalists and, you, and it's not necessarily mainstream to see how you can follow them in the professional ranks. But USA shooting has not only produced some of the highest medal counts uh, in recent Olympics, the, the last Olympics in Tokyo was phenomenal as they had a, a great pool. And not only that, of the medals that, that were won, there was another five American athletes that were in finals that were in the top eight. So they were very close within striking distance and literally within fractions of, of, of an inch or a millimeter of, uh, of making a, a different score and being up there. So it could have been you know, s significant. And you look at track and field, uh, swimming, and wrestling, and then USA shooting, nobody, you could have never thought about that. So we'd like to say that we're the, we're the best Olympic story never told. And the more that we learn about our story, the more we learn how extraordinary it is. So it's, um, it, it, it's great to see that representation and the manifestation of being a, you know, a good citizen, responsible, respectful, good place in, uh, in terms of uh, their, their communities and, and what they can do to, to represent the best of America. Yeah. So what, what do you see as the biggest obstacle facing USA shooting right now? Um, the easy answer is one that, um, you know, is money, but I'm not going to say that because, you know, that's, that's just a level of effort on, on behalf of, of all the advocates. I think, it's a, I think the biggest obstacle is, um, is just awareness and education of, of what we do, what we represent. If, and I, instead, of, instead of looking for, um, for the deficiencies in, in our program, we look for opportunities. And there, there, are, there are so many opportunities out there we see that are represented by some of the other national governing bodies and what they do. Wrestling, for example, is, is a fantastic example. Triathlon is another fantastic example. Look at triathlon. When we were growing up in, in elementary school, was a triathlon even a thing? When you run, swim, and, and, and do the bike, it wasn't. It's a fairly new sport. It really is in, in terms of that. So the way that that is uh, marketed, the way that this, the society embraces it, they do that through education, through awareness. On the, on the shooting side of it as well, let's face it, there's not very much good news coming out nationally about, about gun usage. The good things that do come out about responsible ownership and about comp competition in arms and then the, the, uh, how that manifests itself in, in uh, international competition, I think, is, is a really, really good news story. Being overseas several times in, in either as a, as a fan base or as a, as a delegate with USA shooting and, and seeing uh, competition, particularly uh, in, in Europe and also in, in South Asia, in India in particular, it's pretty extraordinary to see the amount of national pride and emphasis is put in by some of these other countries. Um, India itself is, uh, I, I just love the, the shooting scene in, the, in, in India because uh, it's, a, it's a national sport. They're all celebrities. They have their own channel. They have a, a website that I watched during the Olympics in 2021 because they would, they would watch the same digital representation of the, of the actual qualification matches on there, except they would have color commentary to it. I think I was watching that same stream. It was, it was fabulous. <laughs> it, was, it was entertaining. It was informative. And these guys knew as much about the American athletes they knew more about the American athletes than any of the sportscasters in our country. And not to take anything away from our folks, it's just not you know, what, what they cover. So I think that type of thing about awareness, that about showing the, the goodness of what these kids and then grow up into young adults and compete, what they represent, I think is, uh, is, a, is some of the, you know, it's a great news story, it's the best Olympic story never told, and that's something that we in intend on changing. Now for our audience here, can you share what is the best way that they can support USA Shooting? An easy way to support USA Shooting would be to go to usashooting.org. There's a number of things from news to events to join or, or to donate. I would suggest, obviously, getting familiar with the events and the news stories. If you join, then you're, you're subject to receiving uh, emails, updates, press releases, and all types of information about not only our international events, which are, are a high tempo generally every single year, throughout just about most months of the year, but also what we're doing across our partners. And that's something that, that we're working on here internally. Like, uh, like we talked about earlier, we have a great fortune of building out staff. We have you know a fabulous um, uh, Senior Director for Development, Tracy Barnes, who was uh, an Olympian herself. So she knows this thing. She's been in the business before, and she's also a brand name herself. And I think couple that with uh, folks that are on a different level, like Mr. Mitchell, myself, I cover a swath of, uh, of, of some military veterans and veteran service organizations as well. And then just our athletes. Tell the stories of our athletes. Each one of our athletes has a pretty phenomenal story to tell. Some of them are pretty prolific on uh, social media themselves, and some of them are just humble professionals. And the, you know, I think probably the other thing too, the reason why it's a good thing to support 
uh, USA shooting, whether it's through a donation or joining, if you join the fan club, then you know, you're subject to you know, these types of news stories. But over half of our athletes uh, need, to, need a second job. They, they basically need to make a living somehow. We have one guy that uh, lives in Kansas. He's a farmer. He's, he's one of our shotgun national athletes on, on skeet. And he's 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 busy doing that. Uh, we have some that are that are coaches, and they run a, a one, they run great coaching programs that integrate into the to the community and the cycle by by recruiting in and then training up and influencing and then inspiring and motivating young shooters in order to get into the Olympic movement as well. But that takes away from their training. So yeah. you're you're seeing the country of India, for example. Love those guys and gals, great, but they're nipping at our heels. In some cases, they're beating us in in a lot of these competitions getting government money funneled in there, that's what they do. They do that all the time. Train, they're, they're equipped for it, and that's uh, their full-time job. They isolate and they focus on it. China, of course, another one. Last World Cup in um, uh, Cyprus, uh, the Ch a Chinese rifle athlete set another world record in air rifle. Significant, raising the bar even higher and higher. Our, sh our athletes, I watch it on our range on a daily basis there in, um, in Colorado Springs, do shoot close to those athletes, uh, those, those um, those numbers, 631, 632, up to 635. That's a phenomenal, unbelievable score. So that just shows you the level of competition, the, the level of, um, of, uh, of effort and work that we need to put into it as well. How else can, can we be supported? So if you're, if you're representing or working in another part of the industry, if you own a gun shop, if you own a range, you can promote USA Shooting. You can you, you can contact USA Shooting through USAShooting.org. We'll you know we'll send you materials, banners. We'll give you um, QR codes and things that you can po uh, post up there in your range. We were talking. I actually had the great fortune of talking with uh, Wayne Lapierre at, at Shot Show about it, and, and he said he he sees no reason why every range in America, every gun shop in America, and everybody in, in the Shot Show that's involved in this shouldn't be promoting USA Shooting. Absolutely. So you know, we'll, you know, we want a poster of a gold medalist on, on your wall and even have this person potentially show up and, and, and do an event there and inspire the youth. We think that's what it's all about. You hear that, folks? So be sure to go to usashooting.org, visit the website, learn about the athletes, and become a member. And for more about Shooting Sports USA, please go to ssusa.org.